those. If I back Sir Dragonet, mm. I, I must say, I'd want to ask questions. I don't know what Ryan Moore's instructions were, what his plan was, um, but the horse was well behind early on. He didn't look to be going that badly. I mean, he flew home and finished second. You are, if you backed him, and, you know, sometimes there are genuine excuses, but from watching it, I couldn't see one. And I'd be thinking, why? Great look of incredulity. Why, uh, said Jim McGrath there. What was interesting to me about that analysis, Chris, was that that sparked a whole load of debate, and, and some people got really upset that that, that, that criticism was even levelled at Ryan Moore, but it's pretty mild stuff, isn't it? Are we, are we a bit averse to criticising riding uh, performances? I'm I'm afraid we do. It's it's not something that maybe we do often enough. It, it, you know, you always have to make allowances for how difficult the job is. Um, and then I think in particular, when you're talking about lower profile jockeys, you may have had a shocker on a favourite. You, you don't want to hammer them on the one time they're in the sort of in the, in the, the big stage. Obviously, that's not the situation with Ryan. Um, I didn't feel he was necessarily uh, open to too much criticism here. It's such a difficult course and distance that ten furlongs at Ascot um, because. For a long part of the race, you're coming up that hill at the side of the course. And if you're in a big field on a hold-up horse, the, the running order is basically sort of ossified. It's, it's such an expensive part of the course to make a move that you basically find you're sort of stuck where you are until the turn home, and then you've just, just got to hope that they've gone so hard in front that you can catch them up. And in the end, you know, on this horse, he's run down everything except a rival who was also held up towards the back who got an absolute dream run up the inside that you could not have foreseen so, I mean, I, I wouldn't be throwing brickbats at, at Ryan. I think to some extent he was a victim of circumstance. Problem is that, you know, Matt and punters like him think that when there's a drop of rain, we're going to see sort of Dragon A from the chest of Vaz again. Um, but, you know, it, it just isn't so. I think circumstances combine against him. Mitigating circumstances, Matt, and also you were expecting too much and you're probably talking through your pocket anyway. That's, that's a summation, isn't it? Well, that's just typical Chris Cook, isn't it? Total and utter disdain he treats us <laughs> punters as if... We don't know the game because we don't work for a newspaper. Funny enough, some of us do. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we don't do for a newspaper having our column in every day. Um, look, we can use our eyes, Christopher Cook. Look, the simple thing is, Mountain Angel is a soft ground lover. Everything came right for that horse. But the problem is, you see, Mountain Angel did get the run of the race. But the idea is, or the feeling is, that I think most of us, whether we're punters or not, is that Sir is a class apart. He's a better horse the Mountain Angel, and he wasn't given the chance to show he's a better horse. So, yes, Mountain Angel got a clearer run, and it all worked out perfectly, but Sir Dragon a should never have been in that position to make it so difficult. The only thing I, I'd like to say this just in defence of Ryan Moore, um, I was stood right next to the runner-up in the third spot during the week, and I had some fascinating uh, experiences just from the emotions of the people when they didn't have owners all around them, uh, I'll name two of them. Uh, William Haggis, his expressions all week were something to behold because William had a tremendous week from the point of view the stable ran tremendous, but he didn't reach the winner's enclosure. And gradually, his demeanour became more and more agitated is the best word I can use throughout the week. And as far as Ryan Moore is concerned, I think there's a feeling out there amongst that he, just, he doesn't really care. Like, he just comes in, he goes out, he gets his money. After... The Egypt horse and after Sir Dragonet, I tell you, I tell you, if you had been within a foot of Ryan Moore, he'd have punched your lights out. He was as fuming as we were all fuming about those two particular...